In Canada, women are charged more than men for some of the exact same products and services. Often referred to as the pink tax, this pricing discrimination costs a woman close to $100,000 during her life. The problem was, most didn't even know it was happening. A Toronto coffee shop gave its customers a serious case of sticker shock. So a man pays two dollars for a drip coffee, and I pay three fifty for it. Yeah. Why is it that? You mean women pay more? M is for men, and W is for women. Dude. Now we take the male price. You know what? You just lost a regular customer. Many were outraged, but the group behind the video says it's to highlight price discrimination based on gender. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, women are paid on average 83 cents for every dollar a man earns, which is one of the reasons why Governor Gavin Newsom signed into law a new bill that eliminates the so-called pink tax. We are already coming into the marketplace and into retail stores with less money. The pink tax is when women pay more than men for the same item. Assemblywoman Rebecca bauer Cahan says it makes income equality worse. One year, $2,381 on average, a woman will pay more than a man. That's a lot of money for people that is maybe a month's rent. You know, that's putting food on the table for your family. It adds up in California to $47 billion per year that women pay more than men. It's why she authored Assembly Bill 1287, which will become law this January. The bill says that anything that costs more to produce does not fall under the law. If it costs more to make the item, then obviously you can charge more for it. But goods that are you know, similar in nature. So think about a razor, right, with the same number of blades, but one is pink and one is blue and one is marked to us, and we're paying more for that. So in those cases, it is not necessarily equitable. Two bike helmets. The only difference, this one is marketed for a boy, this one a girl, and this one costs a dollar more. From toys to toiletries, studies show ladies are paying the pink tax. Surprised? No, not, not at all. Because men don't care, so they don't want to spend the money, and women will. Take blue jeans. Online, these Levi's were $68. The ladies' version cost $88. Do you think it's fair? Of course not. But it's the way it is. Dove deodorant, same active ingredients, but while the men's is $5.99, the ladies' is $6.79 and contains less. Schick hydro cartridges, his $15.49, hers $20.99. And Neutrogena face lotion. They contain the same active ingredients. His is $5.89, but hers is more than $13. Even hydrocortisone cream. This red box costs 50 cents less than this one, the feminine pink box. Is that fair? No, it's not fair. <laughs> Most women love to shop, but did you know that female shoppers get charged more at the register than men? New York City's Department of Consumer Affairs recently did a study that revealed across all the industries that were surveyed, women paid more 42% of the time for identical or similar products than those marketed to men. Women often pay more than men for products. It's known as the pink tax. New tonight, Ken's 5 consumer reporter Nicole Kahn explains how women can get around higher prices. Women might find their wallets a little lighter because of the products they buy. You might not really notice that you're paying more for women's products because women's products are separated from men's products and we're not usually comparing those prices. But generally, women's products cost more than men's products. Dealnews.com found women's products cost 7% more on average. It adds up. It's not just that women are paying more for their products over the course of a year. We're also having to deal with other issues like pay disparity and financial discrimination. And it all compounds to kind of give us less buying power than men have. Pink tax has come at the forefront of women's push for equity around the world. Women often pay more than men for equivalent products, especially if those products are made to target women. Gender-based pricing is estimated to cost female consumers around $1,400 annually. The term pink tax isn't exactly associated with the product being pink, but a representation of female-oriented products. For example, Beak for Her Pens, which is a special line of pens for women, are presented as beautifully smooth with a premium price. The line of pens offers some female-oriented colors such as pink, purple, and other pastel colors. 
Besides, Comfort Twin Sensitive Shaver has male and female-oriented lines, with the female-oriented line costing $2.50 more than the men's line, the primary difference being the customer. Premium goods targeting women seem to be the fashionable thing today, but a lot of women seem to be unaware of the underlying pricing strategies. Comparison shopping refers to comparing prices across brands and sizes. The thrill from shopping is associated with value and information addition arising from the inevitable comparisons. Particularly, price comparison often leads to constant searches for more information to make informed decisions. Most consumers have limited price knowledge, but comparison shoppers, through efficient product searches, are more likely to identify pricing variations for similar products. Examining price fairness as a cognitive process requires considering decisions made from judgment, even though it leads to the perceptions of unfairness. Higher perceptions of unfairness elicit negative emotions such as outrage and anger from consumers. Subsequently, negative emotions influence behavioral changes that include understanding the reasoning behind setting the price. The more knowledgeable about pink tax or gendered pricing a woman is, the more likely they are to view it as unfair. The perceived sense of unfairness determines whether a price is unjust or illegitimate. Product variation, which is a function of product characteristics and price, has the largest effects on unfairness perceptions. Being aware of an existing pink tax could result in making implicit comparisons since customers pay higher prices based on pre-existing knowledge. Women who have a greater tendency of comparing prices are more likely to observe the pink tax and subsequently term it as unfair. Also, women who are more familiar with the pink tax are more likely to perceive it as unfair. Basically, the perception of pink tax as unfair boils down to one's identity and ideals. Unfairness perceptions are greater if disparities go against customer expectations. Some people are willing to pay higher prices for goods as in the case of Veblen goods where increase in price is associated with greater demand. Similarly, women could be willing to pay premium prices for female-oriented products for the expression of femininity. Even though women perceive pink tax as wrong, there are those who are willing to pay premium price for feminized products, a phenomenon which boils down to signaling. The willingness to pay premium prices for products informs the choice of one product over another. The signaling theory suggests that one group sends out a message and the receiving group subjectively interprets the message. The theory explains how consumers, through the goods they consume, communicate influence, wealth, and intelligence. The same way the purchasers of luxury brands would want to signal wealth and affluence, it is possible that the color pink signals femininity and pushes its desirability to society. Some sources suggest that women choose items to portray their identities, even for mundane products such as deodorants and razors. The greater a sense of femininity in a woman, the more likely they are to want to use signaling in expressing their femininity. And then how do you avoid it? So I have a couple tips here. So what we are seeing right now, which is really nice, are a lot of brands that are gender neutral. And so obviously, if you're buying a brand that's gender neutral, it's marketed towards men and women and, and non-binary folks, and the price will be more of a level playing field. So that's something that I would do. I would also look at the fine print, like compare your unit prices on the shelf. You know, that pink razor and that blue razor, if they look like they're comparable products and the pink one's more expensive, then just buy the blue one. Or like socks, for example, men's socks socks are so much more colorful these days, but as a woman, you can certainly buy a pair of men's socks if they're less expensive than women's. Also, comparison shop. So if you're shopping online, uh, go on Google Shopping, for example, and enter the item that you're looking for. You'll see where it's sold and for how much, and then you can make a much more informed purchase. And then you can also have a little bit more control over how much you pay by using a deal site. So for example, Coupon Cabin, who I work with, they have uh, many deals and many of them are exclusive to those retailers where you may be buying those personal care products like Amazon, Target, Ulta, CVS. And so that's another way to have a little bit more control over this pink tax issue.